Kind of, it's it's very made up. So this is the Firefox for Android release candidate. Almost done, finally. Yes, absolutely, super excited about that. So first of all, what you notice is it is it, we, we we put the web center stage, so the screen is small enough, so we do not want to add any clutter. Right. So all of the screen elements you can reach by swiping to the side. Here, for example, you see tabs. So tab browsing is something really important and very useful in the mobile browser. And on the other hand, you can pinch to. Zoom, of course, as you would expect it. One very nifty thing is you can also pinch and then move around the page. So, so what do you can you? Do? I have to do that with the other hand. I apologize. <laughs> so, what, what you usually cannot do? Usually, you would pinch and then you would find the right the right, right part of the page. So here, you can just basically pinch and move the page around to focus on exactly what you want to see. Um, I showed. So, so this is our streamlined UI. So no clutter at all. We have only the the what we call the awesome bar on the top to basically show uh, some some interaction elements. Everything else is in the side bar, side panes. So we use the full screen for your browsing pleasure, basically. Um, so so let me show you some of the details actually here. So I, I mentioned tap, swipe, and pinch. We've seen this already. Now uh, I mentioned the the awesome bar uh, real quick, which is basically what looks like a URL bar. If, if you're very familiar with Firefox for the desktop, you know what the awesome bar actually does, um, because it's more than a URL bar. You can actually tap into it, and it shows you your most recent and most relevant web pages. It's like your personal web assistant. Uh -huh. So let's say um, I've, I've read an article on Android Central before in preparation of our meeting. I could just basically find it in that list, or I can just type. I can just basically start typing, and there it is. So I type one or two letters, and actually I can see the entry right here. So it's it's more than your browsing history. We use the so-called frequency model, which is a smart algorithm that bases those recommendations based on how often you, you view a certain page and how recent that view was. So what that means is you, you can basically type less. Nobody likes to type more than you have to, especially on a small device, right? So this is very powerful. So all you do, if, if I like, we are like ten seconds away from our meeting, and I want to quickly look up like your most recent uh, piece, I can just tap here, and I, in ideal case, I just type like one or two letters, and I get that article right there on my screen, and I can load it right from there, which is which is pretty awesome. That's why we call it the awesome one. Something that is perfectly apparent now. We've been following Firefox Mobile for a long, long time, and I've been shouting from the rooftops that the early beta builds were in fact early beta builds and not meant for really mass consumption. Yes, they were slow. They were a little bloated. This is obvious. It's like a whole other browser now. So. It's it's still the same browser, but really, really right. after after like uh, yeah, basically coming back from from some some uh, boot camp to to get it much faster, uh -huh. much significantly faster, uh, much smaller in size. So the original betas were like 43 megabytes. Yeah. Now we're around 13 megabytes. And it's also important to know that you can move browser and all user data to your SD card if you're running it on a device. Android 2.2 or above, so it won't take any, any, or hardly any space on your phone itself. Excellent. So one thing that I wanted to show you again, the awesome screen. You, you can see how I can just basically tap into that screen and tap one or two letters, uh -huh. and it takes me directly to that page if I've been to that page before. Now. One thing that makes this this screen even more useful is you can actually look up pages from your other devices. Ah. We call that Firefox Sync. It's one of the the most powerful features here, which connects mm -hmm. the desktop with all your mobile devices. Yep. So, in that case, I have the Galaxy Tab, which you see in the background. So you see, actually, this is not. So just to just to make sure, this is not a PowerPoint. This is actually an <laughs> HTML. Those are HTML5 slides uh -huh. in the browser, uh, and I have. So this is just a Start tab, and I have three tabs open. I see exactly those three tabs here yep. on my device. Even if I close down this uh, the tab, I don't have to have this running. And like in the morning before I came here, I actually looked at some things on my on my desktop. Actually, it's it's uh, my MacBook, which I don't have with me here, but. So you don't need it here. I don't need it, and and it's there. Like the, like the the use cases are endless. For example, in the morning, I, I saw a notification about FedEx delivering something to my door in San Francisco. Now I want to know the status of that, but I, I never looked this up on my mobile phone, so I can see. Oh yeah, I I looked this up earlier today, so I can basically just tab on the on the tab, and it actually shows me my delivery status. Yeah. Right on my mobile device, even though I've never been to FedEx, and so 
if I had to like memorize my FedEx number or my, my the URL, yep. I would never do this. So I, I can do a quick check and then basically go back to my to my brief, previous page. So the feature is called Firefox Sync. You can connect your desktop computer with all your other devices, with your mobile devices, also with your iPhone, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we cannot deliver a full-fetched browser on the, on the iPhone platform, so we deliver a tool called Firefox Home, which essentially gives you that same view. So you, even on an iPhone, you can see sync data, and uh, so in sync data, you have not only your open tabs, you also have your browsing history, you have your form field data, for example, your user and password. Let me give you another example. Let's say I'm, I was looking for a book uh, yesterday on my, on my computer. You see my Amazon card is still open there. And I looked for this book and I forgot the exact title, but I, I'm actually quite near a bookstore here. So I can basically just tap on it and look up my Amazon card. Well, of course, I have to sign in because I've never been to Amazon on this mobile phone. Right. So I can just click sign in. Did I tap? And so what, what the site does is I, it, it actually fetches the, the page and it also pre-populates my username and password. Very nice. And I've never typed my username or password on this mobile device. I've done it yesterday from home. So it does synchronize my data, including, as I said, users and passwords. So all I need to do is click on sync in to get to, to the book that I put in my card yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you can really get up and go. You can just close your laptop or leave your your office desk, grab your mobile device. As long as it's connected with Firefox Sync, you're good to go. Um, so one other thing that I wanted to mention is the dynamic start page. You've probably seen this before. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for jumping back and forth here a little bit. So Firefox starts with a page that is actually customized to your needs. So you will see the tabs that you had open last time. So if you shut up your phone at night and you typically read the same type of blogs or the same type of news outlets uh, every morning, it's very easy for you to pick some or to just open all in tabs, uh, as you would expect. And of course, you can set any any start page in your browser. It's your browser, right? So uh, you can do that anytime. Another thing, obviously, you can bookmark. So you just swipe to the side and you can bookmark. It's not really necessary anymore because because you have the awesome screen and it automatically keeps track of your behavior. Right. But um, if you're really attached to your bookmarks, you can. And you can also you have the synchronized bookmarks from your desktop. So if you want to organize your favorite web pages in bookmarks, you can totally do that. You don't have to, but it's, it's simple to do that. One very interesting feature, you, you've probably seen, uh, where am I? Um, yeah, let's take the BBC page. This is the desktop page of the BBC, obviously. I can also take, I think I, I've had the uh, the New York Times open before. So this is, a, I deliberately chose the BBC page that's not optimized for mobile here. So I'm on the desktop page. This is hard to read. Obviously I can pinch and swipe to make to make it easier to read. But what I can also do, let's say I'm interested in, um, in my TV channel. So all I do is basically I double tap down here and it swiftly zooms you right into into this page and better yet it understands the, the structure of that page so you see it's it's optimized for this column width mm -hmm. so it automatically zooms you right in where, where it's most interesting for you and you can of course you can also like zoom out and you can you can tap to go back it's always a possibility but like let's say you're interested in something else you just double tap it and it zooms you right into it very useful so the browser understands the structure of your web page basically and it helps you with your with your zoom this being a near desktop version of Firefox, they're built on the same engines, right? Absolutely. So the mobile you can versions, also run extensions here. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so add-ons, as we call them, are definitely a major part of the Firefox browser. And you're right in in that uh, the Firefox mobile browser is absolutely built on the same technology as Firefox for desktop. Gecko, for example, is the is the rendering engine that renders web pages, and it also opens many opportunities for all the those awesome HTML5 examples that you're going to see in just a few minutes. Add-ons, you can just swipe to the right, you can click here, and you see this puzzle piece here, you see a list of add-ons that I have installed. There are quite a few there already. The, our amazing uh, community creates new, one, new ones every day, and all you do is you can just search for an add-on or go to our add-on page, and with one click you can install them. 
most new add-ons are restartless, by the way, so you can install an add-on and just continue browsing. No good. Some older add-ons require a restart of the browser, which takes like a minute. But more and more add-ons are restartless, by the way. And I can show you some add-ons uh, here. So one of the add-ons I've been using is full screen. So somebody built a feature saying, oh, I don't want to see that the, the bar with all my status icons, so they just added the full screen feature. Oops. Another add-on that I that I personally love is, uh, do you use Twitter a lot? Yeah. So I do too. So what I can do is I do not have to leave my browser. I actually have an awesome feature, an awesome add-on called Twitter Bar. So that puts that little birdie in, in my URL bar. And I can tweet about this article or I can just type anything. I can just uh, say, I am at CTIA, CTIA, I don't even see what I'm, VTIA is also nice. Let's say I'm at VTIA, but you get the idea. You can click on this bar. You can actually turn off this confirmation screen, but if I hit OK, this goes directly to my Twitter account. This is the fastest possible way to tweet with, without even leaving that page. Right. Very cool. Another feature, so, so, so there are many other add-ons. Uh, you, you, you get the picture for sure. Something really useful is our features that you can that you can add, that you can use on every web page. Mm -hmm. For example, you can obviously search in a web page in more more ways than one. But the easiest way is to just tap on the page icon, and you can find a page if you're looking for a specific string or something. Very useful. Something that I use all the time is save as PDF because you can save any web page for later reading, especially if you hop on a plane or right. you want to turn off uh, your, your phone network. So you can save it as PDF to read it later or to share it with your friends. Here, for example, you also share this page with any, basically any mobile network that is connected with your phone. Mm -hmm. All the standard ones are here for sure and there are more. And you can also, well, obviously save for later is saving an HTML version of the page. And you can also customize your search engine. So right now, the the awesome bar and the awesome screen also is like your search screen. If you search for something, you can see there are default search engines, mm -hmm. Google, Amazon, Twitter, and Wikipedia. But what if you want to search on Android Central? Mm -hmm. If this is like your major, uh, it does have a search box on the, on the front page. Well, you could go to Android Central, you could tap, you're basically, let me, let me actually see where's my. Like, give me like an example of. For here, let's take Wikipedia for example. Mm -hmm. I could tap here. I could say, add search engine. Oh wow! So I can add Wikipedia to my search engines, and I could do the same thing with other pages that offer a search mm -hmm. engine on their page. So I can then search right from within your from, from within my browser, wow. which comes in very handy. All right.